This is Aaron Thompson, founder of Laugh Masters Academy in Sydney. I'm here with Rob Belushi over Skype, who's in LA, to talk to us a little bit about um, his style of teaching and the benefits of improv uh, as, a, as a tool for people to use, not only in acting, but in everyday life. So Rob, I guess uh, just for, to get things started, tell us a little bit about um, your experience with improv and, and how you have seen it uh, work for you. Um, seen it work for me in what, 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 I mean, my experience with improv is, is mostly from like a performance level. It's something that, uh, that I love to do. You know, I studied in Chicago and, um, you know, as a, as a little kid, I went to second city and, you know, it's like one of the first ways my mom would let me out of the house on my own was to go down to second city and check it out. Um, and after college, I returned to Chicago to train and eventually got work at seconds, you know, trained at IO and Annoyance and all these, you know, in the epicenter of improv, you know, Chicago. Um, but it's a real scene there, man. You know, I mean, a lot of it has to do with drinking cheap beer, but there's also like a lot of class time too, you know, so, um, but I, you know, uh, I did it, I worked over there for about four and a half years before I moved to Los Angeles and now I still work there as a teacher and, you know, I do my own shows there. Um, my experience with it is, uh, you know, it, really satisfying, I gotta say. Um, the skill in itself is really freeing, you know. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll say that my most satisfying work as an actor is when I'm given a character and allowed to improvise with it. Um, it's, it's just really, really satisfying. The, 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 the creationary aspect of it is great. You know the building blocks where you're going and you can launch out into the really unexpected places. I know that um, the reason I love improv as opposed to like, you know, stand-up or uh, sketch, you know, I like, I like sketch too, but I know what I really love about improv is it's a lot like falling in love, you know. You, uh, you're with someone in a moment and you are building something with someone else. And so you never know what's going to happen. And the idea is that it's going to be better than what you could think of on your own. This, this idea of like this synergy with somebody else and um, they're the only person in the world and um, everything matters and you find discoveries and, and uh, you know it's, it's kind of like falling in love you know so it, I don't know God do not air that. That's horrible. <laughs> Improv is about making money and fucking bitches. You know? <laughs> anyway, um, but that's why I like it. You know, I like building something something with someone else as opposed to like saying, "Hey, I'm funny." You know, you can you can bring vulnerability. You can bring all kinds of stuff. So that's my experience with improv. Yeah, that's a great analogy. And and I guess um for for those of the people watching and listening who may not have a real clear understanding of what improv is can you just kind of give us a a sort of an overview of, of of improv in general yeah sure uh improvisation uh was born out of some theater games taught by a woman named Viola Spol in um in Chicago and then her son Paul Sills continued it and then the second city kind of uh, it was a group out of the University of Chicago. They took it over as, um, you know, a, a way to create material for shows. Um, they were ba very based in social, cultural, and political satire. Uh, there's tons of ways of looking at improv. I mean, um, some people don't think it should be a, a final uh, product, that it's too... You know, you never know what's going to happen, so you, you don't know if it's going to be good. Uh, there's a guy named Del Close who, you know, worked and worked and worked uh, on improv as a final product saying, you know, it, it can be put up. Uh, you know, there's different schools. There's Upright Citizens Brigade. There's I.O. There's um, the Groundlings in L.A. There's Second City. There's all okay, tons of places that all have their own little... You know, like any other style of acting, their own little niche or philosophy. But essentially, what improv is is you take something 
um, you take a suggestion from the audience and you know you build something from that um, meaning you create on stage a scene that's not written that you are writing while you are living in that scene for the audience at the same time you know like whose line in it is it anyway is a style of improv called short form improv which is very structured uh, a lot of the comedy comes from the structure and watching the improviser battle with the structure to play the game or whatever um, but that is one type of improvisation there's another type of improv improvisation called long form which is more scenic uh, less structured it's more like hey uh, great thank you for coming uh, give us anything to start with okay I heard you know computers awesome and then you take a scene with that as an inspirational point you know it's not an assignment it's more of a, a jumping off place and you create something right there in front of the other person yeah. and that can get as snazzy and dressed up as you want it to be but in the bare bones it's you get a suggestion from the audience and you build a scene right in front of their eyes yeah sure and when it works it's really funny and free and amazing and when it doesn't work it's really self-conscious and embarrassing <laughs> and pathetic so you and both are funny those. <laughs> what's that and both are funny <laughs> and yeah yeah you got, sometimes you gotta have a lot of those <laughs> to get like, the free spot like anything else but uh yeah, cool. So for, so for people who may have never taken an improv class before or unsure if uh, improv is even right for them, um, what would you say to those people? I would say, um, I would say uh, generally it's a good thing to check out, you know? I would say if you think you're the funniest guy in your office, you should definitely take an improv class to know, to kind of learn what it means really to be funny. <laughs> um, I would say if you have a hard time being in front of people in general, it'd be a great thing to take an improv class uh, to kind of get you away from uh, the fear of looking bad, you know? Yeah, I'd say if you, uh, what's that? I no, I'm agreeing. Yep. Yeah, I'd say if you're uh, if you're an actor and you're trying to and you've done a lot of scene study, improv is definitely something you need to do, um, just to kind of loosen things up and be able to have thoughts and impulses that aren't written down for you. You mm -hmm. know, which I have a lot of respect for, um, but. Um, Right now, improv is like a really hot commodity in Los Angeles, especially in the commercial world. It's like wanted an improv improviser, you know, like blah blah blah. Must have strong improv, you know. Every everyone wants that because people want you to be able to think for yourself, you know. Um, and I would say, people who shouldn't take improv classes are like um, people who have like kind of murderous instincts, you know, like, like violent, <laughs> like that kind of thing. Um, Stay but it's great when, when, you know, when people come in like with people that they work with, right? Like sometimes I'll be hired uh, to do, like one time I was hired um, by like a medical school, right? And this medical school brought me in to teach doctors how to communicate. Like they learn all this stuff about, you know, whatever, the body, I mean, whatever doctors do, blood and whatever, and, uh, but a big problem that they were having with their students was they, they couldn't, they didn't have any bedside manner, they couldn't really communicate with their nurses or their staffs, you know, they were having a really hard time with all that. So, um, you know, the, the, the most important rules of improv, improvisation are communication, and, you know, the, the best improvisers are the best listeners, right? So we would take like we we ran these these med school students through a workshop that was all about communication, listening, responding to what is actually being said, not your idea of what is being said, and not responding to what you're already thinking instead of listening. You know, mm -hmm. ninety nine times out of a hundred people 
already have the response for something before they've even heard of what the other person is saying. So, and in that way, you know, hopefully they learned how to better understand what's going on with their patients, what's going on with their staff. I mean, that's a pretty brief version, but that was one example of mm -hmm. like maybe someone who wouldn't take an improv class would. Yeah, that's cool. Can you, are there any other examples or kinds of specific training that happens in uh, in an improv class that um, that you can think of that would you know affect or be useful to people outside of a you know an acting or performance environment? Totally. Yeah. I mean, the basic tenets of improvisation are you know at least in the second city where I've kind of like you know is my home or my my alma mater, is the idea of yes and or to say yes, right? So I know like a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of corporate America is very fear-based. You know, you want to perform. You don't want to give the wrong answer. You want to, uh, you're afraid of losing your job. You're afraid of not getting your promotion. You're afraid of this. You're afraid of that. And, you know, and it translates through our everyday lives. You know, we are told no, we can't, you know, no, I can't uh, be there at that time, or no, I can't handle this amount of work, or no, I can't give you my spare change, you know, or no, I won't use a condom, you know, like all these kinds of, I'm kidding, but uh, all these kinds of things like uh, we want to train you to start saying yes, because when people start to get new information, uh, it is in a, a, a lot of a very contemporary culture, at least, you know, in American to say, no, 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 that won't work. No, no, no. Like that can't possibly, that, that won't work. And if you flip that around and start saying yes to things, you start making these amazing discoveries. So like in an improv scene, we always say yes, and even though we don't know what's going to happen, right? Like, hey, that's a fantastic car you have. You don't say, that's not a car, it's a moped, right? That would be not saying yes. Right. You know, your idea was a moped, but it's like, oh, thanks, man. Yeah, my dad just bought it for me. You never know where it's going to go, the idea of saying yes. And I think it translates everywhere. I mean, from personal relationships to a loved one, you know, a, a romantic relationship, and definitely in the workplace. You know, the guy or girl who's always saying no is like a real pain in the ass. And it's really fear-based and it's constricting to creativity and problem solving and all these things. So just the attitude of being positive and treating people around you as you know, someone with good ideas that can be listened to really can change the vibe of a workplace for sure. Yeah, cool. So w what, are some, what are some examples of skills that you think uh, someone walks away with after they take a workshop with you? Um, well, I would say, you know, the, the, it depends on the workshop. If it's like a basic improv workshop, or do you mean like a corporate thing, or? Well, let's talk about both. So, like, if if it was um, a basic intro for you know, um, say for non-actors, for example, versus okay. versus how you would adjust your teaching style for a corporate, more of a corporate training environment. Non-actors, you said, or? Yeah, let's go. Let's talk about non-actors, because I think I think a lot of um, a lot of the people that will be coming through the Laugh Masters Academy may not necessarily be professional actors, um, and uh, and I think there's a real opportunity also with you know um, some corporate training stuff. So it'd be interesting to kind of get your slant on on how those two well, those two workshops differ and what and what benefits people walk away with. Sure, um, I would say you know the the most important thing I would teach. Uh, or the, the thing that I kind of drive home the most, especially in, with non-actors, is um, that the most vulnerable person always wins the scene. In, in an improv scene, the person who is the most accessible, shares the most, is the most sympathetic, is the person always going to win the scene, right? Which is kind of um, antithetical to what you would think. Like everyone thinks the most controlled strongest, aggressive, you know, smartest, cleverest person wins all the time, but that's not true. You know, that's not the person you want to be around. Um, and um, I would say it's a, it's a real jump for non-actors to feel that vulnerability. And most actors, you know, myself included, like, it's the hardest lesson to learn. You know, I'm still learning it 
right now in this interview with you, clearly. Uh, <laughs> but um, that, that's the thing I kind of drive home the most because the, the, the hardest thing for most people who are, you know, aren't like prancing around being like, I'm an actor, you know, like the hardest thing for them to drop is this idea of take me seriously, I'm a serious person, right? Well, you can be a serious person and still look bad and not have your life crumble around you because <laughs> you look, you know, bad or vulnerable or accessible, right? These kinds of things attract people to you, right? And the idea of opening yourself up, saying yes to the world around you, you know, is uh, I think a real plus. Um, you know, we do lots of things to, to get to that point. We play stupid games, you know, we, we play, you know, try to do physical things to kind of get you in your body and out of your like cerebral, you know, everything has to be perfect. I can never make a mistake. Mistakes equal failure, like, you know, kind of mindset that we're in. But yeah. um, the idea that you drop this veneer of perfect perfection or I'm always performing to where I'm living in this moment and I don't have to control everything. That's kind of like the shift we want to get people to, to where they're actually like paying attention to people when they're listening mm -hmm. instead of thinking of ways to head off their fucking argument, you know what I mean? Yeah. Which is like the most obnoxious thing. So uh, that's kind of what I try to, to drive in with non-actors. And then like, hey man, it's okay to have fun, you know? It's okay to be stupid. It's okay to be silly. It's okay to make bad jokes, you know? It's okay to have fun. It's an okay thing. Fun doesn't have to always mean being drunk at a bar. You know what I'm saying? Like being fun, having fun can mean a lot of other things. And if you let this kind of spirit of yes and fun into your life, that it can change things. Yeah, cool. It can be powerful. That's great. Awesome. Well, um, again, very much look forward to having you down here to um, teach at Laugh Masters Academy, and uh, thank you so much for taking the time to chat. Ah, it's my pleasure, man. You're blessed. All right. See ya. Do they all see how handsome you are when they see this interview? No, they only see how handsome you are. Ah. You're, you're well, the star. Is my wig? <laughs> is the wig right? <laughs> yeah. We'll give, you, we'll give you last looks. Here you go. Give us, give us uh, your blue steel. <laughs> This is a mole. This is not dirt. Okay. This always... <laughs> Rob Belushi, thank you. <laughs> thank you, man.